This is a wonderful opportunity to do a little something something with orchids that we normally don't recommend or do or see done, but it can be done. And I'm going to talk you through it, how it can be done, because this orchid is grown without any drainage holes in the container whatsoever and it will continue to be in the same container once we've cleaned her up and everything without drainage for the foreseeable future. So let's get into this because it's also good timing. We still have some active root tips which we're going to take advantage of. And let's see what we're up against. Can't squeeze a container like this. Oof, goes without saying that with any container that has absolutely no drainage, we can be in trouble very, very quickly <laughs> because muck, sludge, grossness, decay, degraded, substrate, all the mixes will be collecting at the base into something that looks very familiar, like my biology experiment. But seeing as this is not my orchid, I'm not going to experiment. Instead, what we're going to do is the usual standard procedure. We're going to get rid of all the media and then give her a good soak because all these roots, while I've had time to mist them with calcium and magnesium, they need a little bit more than what they've had in the past days. So exciting to get some orchids that have nothing to do with me except it is my responsibility to make sure that the owner gets them back and then gets to be able to enjoy them in the future with a few new care instructions to follow, which I will also discuss once we've untangled her. Otherwise, I'm going to be focusing on one thing and not on the other. And I do need to untangle her, even though she's going back in the same container, but I can still at least guide her roots in properly very carefully because there's no way I could mist her more aggressively. I didn't want to cause any issues around the stem. So the roots are not supple at all. There we go. So in the bottom, they did have rocks. I suppose I could wash them off, but I'll give them back to them separately. We have other plans and ooh wee, ooh wee we can get rid of some of this stem. <laughs> See how much I can just break off easily without getting the secateurs out? Let's see if we need to take more off than that. No, we don't actually. I'm just gonna take some of the declining, degraded, soft velamen off. I'm leaving the steely for now, just to make sure I don't lose my anchoring points capability of getting the orchid into the pot with a little bit of anchoring without having to add a support is a bonus. This looks precarious, but it is firm, which is great. One down and one to go. Little squeeze with the thumb. We need you, come off, there we go. All right, let's see what we can wash off. I know it doesn't look like it, but this looks good, <laughs> to me anyway. This is a strange one, it's all woody and dry, but it's still plump. Yeah, we'll leave it. And then we're gonna give them a jacuzzi in calcium and magnesium once again. And get those roots nicely hydrated. And give them another chance to soak up some nutrients, some of the good stuff at the right pH, 6.8. And while they have their little jacuzzi, I am going to clean out that nasty, nasty container in the background. Now the owners of these two orchids had the right idea. They were pretty much doing the PET method, but without drainage holes, meaning 
inorganic media at the base where the reservoir is and then the rest is filled up with organic media of choice depending on the orchid and i had to think whether i should give them their rocks back put them back into the container but seeing as there will be algae developing, especially if you fertilize your orchids, when you do a container that has no drainage, there will be algae at the base. And the white stones, while they're pretty at first, they will not be able to compete with the aesthetics of lava rock where the algae won't show up as much. So we are going in with chunky lava rock for the entire container. Several years ago, I did an experiment with colomy because that is how they say to grow colomy. Nice, beautiful container. You can choose all these different kinds of colors for colomy, make it decorative, put your orchid inside, and she is supposedly supposed to grow really, really well. It didn't work for me because I think the colomy itself has no real water retention. There's nothing to absorb. It was just, it just didn't work out. And the moment I took my keiki, my experimental keiki out of the colomy and put her in my setup, it wasn't lava rocks, but put her in my setup, she took off like a little rocket and is doing very, very well. So that is why I'm going to give these two ladies lava rock. And then try and get them in very, very carefully, a little bit lower than they were, so that we've got several years where they can be undisturbed. I'm happy to see that some root tips were growing. And put them in in such a way that they both face the same direction, so that the owner doesn't have to think about what direction of light they need to be positioned in, and also neither of the two have to think about changing the direction of their leaves in order to be able to absorb the maximum light depending on where they are located. So that's why we're going to put them in together, kind of back to back, as long as they face in the same direction. And before we scrunch up with the roots, we're going to take out some lava rock. There we go, like that. Just gonna fill everything up with CalMag again. Really hydrating those roots. And now very carefully, we're going to fill up with lava rock. So why not just throw the lava rock in and be done? Well, where you see the darker green roots, they need to be covered with some form of media because that is where water retention was the highest. And I'm just positioning the lava rock in such a way that those roots still have some water retention, even if it's just humidity from the lava rock around them. And that's why I'm doing this little game of Tetris here. The former aerial roots, they're fine if they don't have lava rock around them consistently. They'll get used to this new environment very, very quickly, seeing as they are in active growth. Alrighty, you have seen it from the side. Let me show you one side from the top. This is what one side looks like now, and we shall repeat the other side. I know I have four sides, but it is more important for me to repeat it on two sides, and then we can always fuss it with a little bit more lava rock as and where needed. But a wonderful root tip right here. We'll be mindful of that. Now I've left a huge gap right here. There's no lava rock. 
because all these roots were previously aerial and I do not want them to be too covered. Besides, there's plenty of humidity and aeration around all the other existing roots. The owners can enjoy root tips growing. Now I need to drain the container and then we will talk about how to move forward with the care so that nothing rocks out and everything grows beautifully. So if this is of interest to you and you want to know how to care for an orchid that's in a container without any drainage holes, well, pretty much you fill up your container to about 30% half, depending on what you want to do, depending on how hot it is. And then just let the water, could also be nutrient solution, you just let that evaporate, go dry and repeat once the container has dried out. This way you're not overwatering. It is exactly the same as water culture. You can do this full water culture by always having water in the container and then you'll have water roots or you can do semi water culture by letting the container dry out completely. Just one thing when you get an orchid in or let's just say you have a new orchid or you want to transition an orchid and do something like this. Be very, very mindful of roots that were in media before and have this dark green along here. They need to be in consistent contact with moisture or else they will fail. Now this orchid is going back to its owner, so I will only be able to leave instructions with them, seeing as we're not going to have her around for much longer. They will have to make sure that at least they missed a little bit here to keep this from drying out because you don't want to have the water all the way up here that would be overdoing it. Especially when you have aerial roots, there is no need to fill media around this side at all. And in your case, if you do have aerial roots that are a little bit drier, don't cover them with media. This way they are hydrating down here by the water. And then of course that will evaporate and go down or the orchid absorbs it up and the roots will grow and whatever starts to go down into this space and then starts touching the media or the water level, those roots will then be able to handle wetter conditions. We don't wanna do that right out of the gate, especially as these roots right here, they don't have growing tips. But I am going to add a little bit more to raise the humidity level a little bit around them, just to encourage them to go down a little bit faster. And in this case, you also don't have to miss these roots because you have left one root, in this case, touching the water, and that will take care of the entire orchid. If you have a similar situation and you have a root that is super dark green that is not touching the water just yet, in this case, it's barely touching the water, then you want to be able to mist on the surface just to keep this root alive because that will also keep the lava rock damp in this instance. This root is not far away from reaching the reservoir because that is the level I'm going to tell them as well. Keep it at 30%, let it evaporate, not for too long because you can see here this root right here, super white, beautiful pink root tip. This one needs water almost all the time because it had grown into the sludge that we saw earlier. So pretty much that is it. It is a very, very simple, fun way to grow any orchid. I would say chunky roots preferably, and I just put lava rock next to that root for a reason. Why did I move it? Because I thought it was too high, you see? Gotta check every single angle. Look at it from all sides. But yeah, so lava rock, especially with chunky roots. I've never done this with a cymbidium. My colony experiment failed, but that was because of the colony, not because of the method. But if you have any questions, anything more that you would like me to elaborate on, please, please bring that to my attention in the comments. And please, would you also give this video a like so that when the owner watches it back, at least they know it was of interest to others and not just to them. And I also look forward to hearing from you if you grow your orchids without any drainage holes and let me know how it's working for you in the meantime i thank you so very much for watching your time your support and your subscription to the channel is greatly appreciated if this is your first time here please consider taking a moment to subscribe and as per usual i wish you a fabulous day on the condition though please that you stay safe take care bye he's been wanting to say hi Hello, okay, let's give it a dance. Yay for the orchid. Yay for the owner. Let's dance. <laughs> Thank you everybody for watching. 
Take care. Bye.